Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson and Tony Sukalas. We continue our BatmanInsider.com top 40. To catch all the top 40 action, go to BatmanInsider.com. Today, we're talking about players 25 through 21, and we lead off with a very exciting Slade Bolden, the Slade Cat. You see him at Wildcat. Um, wide receiver, obviously. I mean, he's got incredible route running abilities. Um, he was a Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, in the state of Louisiana, it's hard to believe that he's already a redshirt sophomore coming into the 2020 season, 5'11", 191 pounds. Um, last season, two receptions, 34 yards. Um, saw him throw – did he throw a touchdown pass last year, Tony? Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. Miller Forstall, six-yarder. All right, so uh, let's, let's begin by talking, off, uh, t- talking about Slade Bolden. Yeah, I think he's got a – you know, especially after uh, yesterday's news that uh, – that Tyrell Shavers is transferring from the program. I think he's got a really good shot at being in the top four receivers. Um, and then, you know, he's going to be in some kind of uh, offensive package, you know, they, they use him as a lot of gadget plays, you know, so he'll probably still be the wildcat quarterback. And I think he's also a guy that could maybe contribute on the kickoff return, you know, uh, depending on what Alden wants to do there. He's a guy that's really good with the ball in his hand, uh, can make plays in open space. And, and he's just kind of an agile guy. So I think that there's a lot of things Alabama can do with him. Um, and I think they'll just continue to find ways to kind of get him involved. I don't necessarily think he's going to be a star, but the reason why he's so high up on this list is just because he can do a lot of things. And I, I think, you know, he'll be a real versatile weapon for them. Yeah, I think the way Alabama has used him, um, you know, in, in the past, being at the wildcat position, um, you know, they're, they're going to find a way to use Slade Bolton. I think he's just too talented. I, I also found it interesting that, and I think we've talked about this before, that when Alabama plays a dual threat quarterback, Slade Bolton's the guy on the scout team. I mean, and that doesn't surprise you just because he's such a great athlete. Yeah, yeah, he's mobile. I mean, he played uh, quarterback in high school as well. So uh, he's not a guy that's going to sling it, you know, but, he, you know, if you have him in that wildcat package, he can, obviously he's shown that he's capable of catching people off guard with a throw. He's not going to do that a lot. But um, like I said, he's a, he's a playmaker. And I think, you know, you just want those kind of players on your team. Number 24, King Makuda, outside linebacker. Uh, he's a sophomore. He saw time in 10 games last season as a freshman, six foot five, 243 pounds. Alabama's looking for an outside linebacker to step up. We've talked about that before. There's some freshmen coming in that we like. But King Makuda could be that guy that rises up along with Chris Allen that emerges into um, a top outside linebacker for Alabama. Right, Tony? Yeah, it's kind of funny because if you were at practice, and I'm sure you heard it too, Early on in King Makuta's year, uh, like, you know, season, freshman season last year, he was getting his butt chewed, like, almost every day by Sal Sanceri. <laughs> and I, I think it just got through him because, you know, I, from everything I've heard, he's really developed into, a you know, an elite guy. And I think he's probably got a good chance of maybe earning a starting spot at that Sam position um, this year. So he's a guy, I think it's like he's always – he came into Alabama maybe a little bit raw – and now he's kind of living into that potential. I think he's really poised for a breakout year. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at some of the guys that are coming in, but there's also some guys that got some, some playing time last year that could emerge this year. Kevin Harris is another one, King Makuda. Um, you know, and there, there are several other guys at the outside linebacker position. So I think when we also look at position battles, outside linebacker certainly an area that we're going to look to as, as we move into the 2020 season. Um, at the number 23 spot, we got a, a new player to the Alabama roster, and that is Ronald Williams, um, who's going to be a junior junior college transfer, six foot two, 188 pounds. So he's a taller defensive back, which should bode well for Alabama and bode well for any team in college football. Really um, earned some junior college accolades, uh, had 31 tackles and three interceptions. Um, at the junior college level. And a- as you wrote in your article, Nick Saban doesn't bring junior college tran- transfers to sit on the bench. Yeah, and, and when you look at Ronald Williams Jr., he's a guy that can play, you know, pretty much any position in the secondary. He can play cornerback. He can, he's big enough and, and versatile enough to play star. And I think he can even really play safety if you need him to. So with Alabama needing to replace four out of its five starters in the secondary, you want as many of those versatile guys as you can get. And Alabama – fortunately for them, has a lot of those guys, you know? So um, I, I think he's going to find a way in the, in the defense just because there's not a lot of experience. And it, I know it's Juco ball, but Juco ball is a lot higher level than high school ball. And so he's been playing at, he'll have less of a transition than maybe some of these younger guys. Um, so I, I personally think that, you know, he'll find a role somewhere in that starting five defensive backs. And I, and I like his size too. I mean, you know, there's, 
I mean, six foot two, 188 pounds. I mean, uh, Trayvon Diggs was a, was a big corner and Alabama needs a big corner. You have Patrick Sertan, who's also a bigger player. You have DeMarco Helms, who we talked about earlier, um, who's a bigger guy. So in the secondary, those, those bigger guys that can move around, obviously, um, that works well in the secondary. And I'm curious to see how, um, how he plays. You know, we didn't get an opportunity to see him during spring football. None of these guys, obviously, but he was one of the guys that I kind of had circled in because well, as I've talked about several times already on our segments, that's where my questions lies in the Alabama secondary. Yeah. Um, moving on, number 22, going to special teams is the kicker, Will Reichert, who enters his sophomore season, played five games last year for the Crimson Tide, four or seven on field goals, uh, 21 of 22 on extra points, and then was hampered with a hip flexor injury. Um, what, what to expect from Will Reichert this year? I mean, he, is he going to be the guy that, um, you know, saves Alabama from these kicking woes? You know, that four of seven, when you look at it on paper, it doesn't look that sexy, but he, he <laughs> did hit two uh, long field goals, I think 49 and 50 yards or something like that. Um, so he's a guy that, you know, has a big leg. And it, I like that he missed some extra kicks, so some early kicks, sorry, and, and was able to kind of rebound off of that and, and, you know, not let that get to his head. Because I think, you know, once you miss a kick as an Alabama kicker, everyone starts, you know, hunkering down and, and getting scared that it's happening again you know it's kind of like PTSD uh with with the field goals I think Will Reichert is a guy that that can kind of rise above the level that Alabama's had and really kind of break out of that kicking slump um it'll be interesting to see how he uh you know kind of progresses to this hip flexor injury I have no idea how that will affect him moving forward I think you know from an Alabama standpoint it makes sense to maybe limit his duties He's obviously a guy that could do just about anything in the special teams, but I don't think Alabama necessarily wants him kicking punts. You know, that's what we talked about, Ty Pirine. You want him to step up as a punter because you don't want Riker, you know, having a chance to tire out his leg. by want him to be too him. pressured, right? You don't want too much pressure on him. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so they focus on the kickoffs, which he's really good at kickoffs, and, and, and also those, those uh, field goals. And I think if they can do those two things, it'll be great. All right, we'll have to see how Will Riker does in 2020 season. But everybody's hoping that he could be the guy to, you know, stop this, uh, you know, th this terrible onslaught of, you know, kicking episodes that Alabama has faced in the past. Um, number 21, Brian Robinson Jr., um, six foot one, 226 pounds. He's a senior at Alabama uh, last year, 441 yards and five touchdowns. And, and, you know, we've talked about the running backs um, all summer long, or I guess summer just started, but, you know, during this season, and no one has really mentioned Brian Robinson. It's been Najee Harris and Trey Sanders. What, what do you expect from Brian Robinson? I mean, obviously he's a capable back. He has a lot of experience. Nick Saban likes him. Um, what, what, what do you think is going to happen with, with Brian Robinson this season, Tony? Yeah, so Brian Robinson's a guy that kind of, you know, underwhelmed me last year. I was expecting a breakout season, and he – he had the lowest yards per carry out of all the backs. And he just doesn't seem like he was capable of really breaking that big play. I'd like to see a little bit more out of him this year. I'd like to see, and I think he'll have a chance early on. I personally think that Trey Sanders will be the number two back, but I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama starts the season kind of giving Brian Anderson, sorry, Brian Robinson, that, that chance to be the number two back, you know? Um, I think Trey Sanders is a more talented back and that's why I have him higher on this list than I do Brian Robinson but I, Brian Robinson will have a chance I think he's a really powerful runner as well he could be the goal line guy and I think that could be a, a really big role for him you know when you need those short yardage situations he's a guy that kind of hits the hole and, and can move people so he's got a role on this team I, I just want to see more out of him before I move him higher on this list yeah, and I, and I think I agree with that. I mean, we need to see more production out of Brian Robinson. I think at times I felt he was a little bit slow um, out of the backfield last year, and I would like to see more speed. I think when he first got to Alabama, he was one of the fastest running backs. So maybe he's added a little bit too much weight. I mean, he's a big dude. He's up there with Najee, 230 pounds. Um, but you're right. In goal line situations, I think Brian Robinson could really be effective for Alabama. And you're right. I think he's going to have a role on this team. So it's going to be interesting to see how they use him in the offense going forward. Hey, please remember to like and subscribe to our videos. Um, if you want to catch the complete top 40, you can obviously look right here on YouTube or you can go to BamaInsider.com and read more about the top 40 um, as we continue to march on closer to number one. And um, I'm curious to see who you guys have as number one. I, I know uh, Tony already has it. 
written up. So um, we're getting closer and uh, we're inching towards that. So more recruiting coverage, more team coverage at BamaInsider.com. For Tony Sukalis and Kyle Henderson, we'll catch you next time right here on BamaInsider.com.